everybody. Welcome back to Jason Explains Things and welcome to a new series I'm titling Our Super 74, which is all about this 1974 uh, Volkswagen Super Beetle, which has been in my wife's family since it was new. And today I was just gonna give you a brief story, my story of the car, and also um, we're gonna go through kind of front to back and do a tour of the car, uh, things I've fixed or modified, kind of what makes this car special to me. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. That's my dog Beatrix. She's hanging out. <laughs> All right, well, uh, no further chit chat. Let's get started with the tour. All right, so starting with the front of the car, uh, I guess one of the first things you'll notice is the paint. Uh, it's been repainted back in 2011. I guess, you know, my history with the car started in 2008 when uh, my wife's dad handed the car down to us. It originally was um, her grand, uh, grandparents' car, then went to her dad and then uh, to us, and has become my hobby slash obsession. Um, I just love this car. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I started working on it um, probably in 2010, 2011, uh, just kind of trying to tinker with it a little bit, make it run a little bit better. It didn't run too good. Uh, still had original paint and dents and all sorts of stuff, but uh, yeah, just over time, just kind of being a little braver and a little braver and a little braver. All of a sudden, you find yourself with a whole new hobby and doing car shows and stuff and, and having a new set of friends and uh, it's great. Volkswagens, they bring people together, man. <laughs> anyway, that and occasionally they cheat with uh, diesel fumes. But, that's beside the point. Uh, yeah, so the paint, uh, painted uh, by in 2011, original color, uh, except for the white, the white on the side. Um, the bumpers, the bumpers are original. They're kind of, you know, they're not, they're not perfect, but they're original and uh, replaced trim. Um, go ahead and take a look inside the trunk. Hi there. <laughs> so uh, what do we got here? So we got a carpet kit. Uh, this is aftermarket carpet kit, just to kind of dress everything up. Got a zip tie in here, that's weird. Uh, we got a bag of tools. If you're going to drive one of these cars, especially any distance, you're going to want tools. Let's see, what do I got in here? Um, got oil, very good to always have some extra oil on hand. We've got, got a lot of things. <laughs> got jumper cables. I kind of overdo it a little bit. This is kind of my road trip bag, but I've just left it in here because it is better to have it and not need it. And on that note, we've got ourselves a um, fire extinguisher. Yep, there's our original cardboard paneling. And underneath that is your spare tire. So the spare tire uh, lays flat on Super Beetles. On a standard Beetle, it actually would be kind of uh, propped upright, which is one way, which is one of the many ways you can tell whether a car is a standard Beetle or if it's a Super Beetle. Another thing you might be noticing is this metal bar right here. And what this is, is this is a, a stress bar that connects the two tops of the McPherson struts, which are on both sides here. Another thing that makes a Super Beetle a Super Beetle is the fact that it has a kind of a modern style McPherson strut system. And actually, if you look over on the wall over here, I have a, a old advertisement for uh, uh, replacement shocks for that system. So that's kind of cool. I, when I found that, I had to purchase it because it, Matching, right? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this uh, this metal bar, what it does is essentially makes the car a lot more rigid because just kind of another connection point makes everything link together. So when you're, you know, in turns, uh, makes the car actually handle surprisingly well. All right, moving on to the side of the car, we've got the side of the car. <laughs> uh, so the wheels, the wheels are original to the car. Um, they're the ones from back in the day. Um, when we got the car in 2011, the, uh, 2008, sorry, uh, the car had, they were just spray painted silver. And then I tried to do a, a repaint myself and I repainted them black. Um, but a couple years ago we had them, uh, professionally powder coated white to kind of match the, the white on the side here. And I think they look really cool. Also one little tip with, um, powder coated wheels is they're incredibly easy to clean. Just, they wipe right off. Uh, roof rack. The roof rack is a recreation, aftermarket recreation of an original accessory. 
uh, incredibly handy, also very good for car shows, you know, staging with, with uh, blankets and uh, picnic baskets and what have you. Okay, uh, another thing, awesome addition we did a year or two ago is these pop-out windows. These are in a factory accessory that I got at a car show, I think, in uh, Yakima, Washington. Um, yeah, these are incredibly cool. Um, they really help with air circulation when you're driving around in the summer without uh, air conditioning. Um, before we move on to the back of the car, the engine, that kind of thing, I actually want to have, uh, have you guys take a closer look at the front suspension. It's pretty cool. Okay, with the front wheel off, we can see that we've got disc brakes. Um, originally, Volkswagens of this era uh, had drum brakes on the front and back, and uh, drum brakes aren't exactly awesome. I mean, I mean they're okay for certain things, but they, they more, rather than stop you, they more you know slow you down nice and gradually. So if you wanna actually stop at any particular time, you know, disc brakes are a, quite the upgrade. Uh, these are actually modeled off of I remember they are modeled off of Carmen Ghia's of that time period that uh, came with disc brakes as they were the sporty Volkswagen. Uh, this kit was from toplineparts.com. Also from them is this um, lowering kit I did. So it uses the same McPherson strut, but it's adjustable. I don't know if you can see here, but these, um, they're little steps so you can lower the car um, incrementally. And I think I've lowered this at either an inch and a half or two inches. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which, but lower the front end just a little bit to give it a little more of a sporty look um, without having it scrape the ground and, and that kind of thing. Um, along with improving the handling, also from Top Line Parts, kind of all done around the same time, it was this um, improved sway bar. Um, it's thicker than stock and just makes the car more rigid and uh, handles a lot better. To match the upgraded sway bar in the front, I also installed a rear sway bar as well. And uh, yeah, this car handles surprisingly well. Put the wheel back on. All right, well, we've got the back of the car here, so let's uh, go over a few things. Uh, Hella tail lights, which are, uh, these are kind of called uh, lovingly the, I think the elephant foot style tail lights when they kind of had to redo everything in the 70s for, for safety purposes. All right, and here's probably one of the sad still in work in progress things is this area right here, this area right here has rust growing from the inside out. Um, this is actually kind of a, a huge bummer and a, kind of one of those things that's actually a design flaw with these um, 70s, specifically 70s um, standard and super beetles, is there is actually uh, two pieces of sheet metal here with foam that is supposed to kind of keep um, uh, engine fumes from getting inside the cabin. But what happens is, is that moisture will enter in from these crescent vents and get stuck in here inside the foam and then it will rust the inside of the car inside out. And that is exactly what is happening here. And nicely to match on the other side. So that's something that eventually this will just have to get cut out about from here to here, and uh, that will be done by somebody other than me because frankly, I don't have the, uh, the, <laughs> the, body, the body work skills to, uh, to do that. That is a huge bummer. Let's move on to something that's not a huge bummer, is this fantastic um, dealer license plate frame. So the cool story about that is that it's actually from the dealer that my wife's grandfather bought the car originally from, but I searched the internet for about three years for this just to kind of, you know, something to add to the story of the car and to show where it came from. It, it, it's more of the history of this car because this car is just, it's not a car. I mean, this, this bug is kind of, it's more than that. It's more than that. Anyway, getting sappy. Uh, original bumper uh, with, you know, a little, little banged up, but in good shape with um, redone trim. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the back of the car. Um, let's look at the engine. So here is our engine. This is uh, original to the car. Well, not a lot of what you see here is actually not original to the car. It's been uh, replaced or uh, upgraded over time. But we have the original engine block. Uh, this is a 1600cc uh, uh, dual port, um, air-cooled, four-cylinder boxer engine. Um, I did a top end uh, rebuild uh, back in 2014. Top end rebuild is, you know, 
that isn't taking everything apart, but that would be taking the heads off, uh, taking the pistons off, um, replacing the barrels that the pistons circulate in. And I upgraded the size of those pistons and barrels from uh, 85 and a half millimeters to 87 millimeters. So it actually upped the size of the engine from 1600 cc's to, uh, or 1580 something something, to uh, six, uh, 1641 cc's. So a little bit more power, a little more displacement. And uh, so, you know, a little bit of a performance um, improvement there. Another thing that's uh, debt once you, as soon as you look at this and you know, a, a, a Volkswagen person would know that this isn't stock is the carburetor. This is a Weber two barrel progressive carburetor, uh, which came with uh, the kit, came with this air, air filter and a new intake manifold. Um, definitely adds a little bit of power. Um, it's a nice kit, good quality, um, not one of those cheap Chinese knockoff things, but I would say I, I wouldn't do this again. And the reason why I wouldn't do it again is because it's incredibly difficult to tune. It runs like crap, but it's alive. <laughs> uh, I actually had to take this to a Weber um, expert. Um, and he was able to kind of take the carburetor apart and he had to like drill out some of the internals to make this work for this engine. Uh, if I were to do it again, I'd honestly leave it alone. Just do a, you know, keep the stock Solex carburetor or maybe do like a dual carb setup. But yeah, I would have, I would have done, I would do something different than this again, but it's a good kit and uh, it's good for now. Uh, other upgrades I've done, you know, over the past few years, we got a uh, upgraded uh, ignition coil and distributor. The distributor is a flamethrower brand, which uh, gets rid of the old point system inside the distributor, which requires a fair amount of fiddliness and maintenance, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, which it upgrades it to an electronic system, which is better. But this particular brand keeps the vacuum advance, which long story short, just makes everything run better. This is, this is awesome. Oh, this camera can't see it, but this one can. Over here, this is a, a uh, fuel pressure regulator that I had to install. I think it's called Mr. Sippy is the brand. But uh, this is something that I had to do because of this uh, carburetor because the uh, fuel pump uh, puts out a different PSI, I think too high if I remember right, than, than, than this uses. So I had to add this. So there's a bunch of like fuel lines running through here. I've tried to keep it as clean and nice as possible. But uh, again, another reason actually why I wouldn't do this again, because it, you have to add more, more components and there are more things to adjust and yeah, but uh, it's okay. So I've replaced the generator and the starter with uh, nice Bosch parts as things have died over time. Uh, another little, you know, kind of a little, frankly, it's mostly cosmetic is this um, um, oil filler neck, which just, it makes adding oil a lot easier. And I like the look and it's nice. Uh, a few other things I've done to the, uh, the engine over time. We've got a new um, muffler, new exhaust tips, uh, engine pulley with timing marks on it. So it's a little easier to adjust the, the timing uh, after valve jobs, that kind of thing, valve adjustments. Um, but that's pretty much it. There, I'm sure there are other things I've done in there, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so before I show you the interior, why don't we uh, take it for a little spin? So obviously the most important question about any car is what is it like to drive? And this car is amazing to drive. Sure, it's not fast, and sure, it's uh, not exactly safe, and, uh, oh, we got hay on the ground. Yipes. <laughs> but what it does have is, wow, it's going fast. Uh, what it does have is an insane amounts of charm, insane amounts of mechanical feedback. You know, the you feel the road. You feel what gear you're in. Like, this doesn't even have a tachometer, but you're like, okay, I, you know, you, you can feel, you can sense, you can hear everything. You know, and beyond just the car itself, to drive around in something that you fixed up yourself, you know, this car runs well because you made it run well, it turns well because you made it turn well. I mean, nothing, nothing beats that. 
absolutely nothing. Like, this clutch shifts because I put that clutch in. I mean, I, when, when you just buy a car or when you just, you know, somebody gives you something or you just buy something, you don't, you don't get to actually feel it. You don't get to appreciate it. It just makes it so much more special, so much more. And yes, you can speed in a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> not staged, not staged at all. So let's uh, let's have a look inside the interior here. So first thing, first things first that I'm very proud of is the dash. Uh, this is not the original dash. The original one had a big crack in it, which is very, very common with these uh, dashes. Pretty much actually not just Volkswagen, but just dashboards from the 1970s had a tendency to split when they're left out in the sun. Uh, I searched high and low on the internet for one of these and one day I found one on Craigslist for $80 and I and I I think I almost did a backflip one time in my life. <laughs> but uh yeah, no, this was a uh, I got this. I put this in a uh I don't know, two, about 2 or 3 years ago is a very fiddly job. Uh, cut to a picture of me doing that and looking crazy. So yeah, as you can see lots of wires. Um lots of fun. Lots of fun that job, but really really cool. Uh replacement speedometer, uh the original which I still have. Uh, the odometer was broken and the, and the fuel gauge was broken, but uh, yeah, so speedometer there. Ah, uh, this clock is another factory uh, accessory uh, that I looked high and low for, um, and uh, I think that came from the UK, if I remember right. The steering wheel uh, is another replacement that I, I, I ordered. Uh, the original had cracks right here. They have a tendency to split over time, and uh, this one is a replacement that uh, is original, but it's been refurbished and uh, no cracks and uh, very, very nice. So another thing about the interior that I've done that I absolutely love, it's my, maybe my favorite uh, modification to the interior are these seats. So these are Recaro seats out of a uh, Mark II Jetta GLI. Um, so they're still Volkswagen seats, but they're obviously of a different time period. I just absolutely love them because they're they are comfortable. They also, because I'm a taller, I have a longer torso, uh, they're lower to the to the floor, so I have a better view and my I just have more headroom, which is nice. And then I had the rear seat reupholstered by a upholstery shop to match. Um, it doesn't match perfectly, but it's pretty close, and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. So another one of my favorite things that I've done uh, on the car is the rear speaker tray. You have I have a 10-inch subwoofer in the, in the center, a Rockford Fosgate, and then uh, two Memphis audio speakers uh, left and right uh, for stereo, because stereo is, uh, is in. It's the latest thing I heard. And then behind that, I have a piece of oak trim that I stained to match the uh, wood uh, slats in the roof rack. Overall, you know, it's definitely not stock, but I think it looks classy, uh, at least in my own personal opinion. Please comment and tell me that I'm wrong and that it looks bad. Uh, I appreciate when you guys comment like that. <laughs> no, I really do. But uh, beyond that, a couple of little touches are the floor mats with uh, Wolf, uh, Wolfsburg Crest, which are nice. The headliner, headliner's been replaced. I had that done by professionals. They did a great job. Another really great addition is this Hurst shifter. These are legendary in their quality and just in their ability to make shifting a lot a lot smoother and a lot better. And to top it all off, I had this wood grip here. I had that ordered uh, later on just to kind of dress it up. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the interior. All right. Thank you very much for letting me take you on a tour of my Super Beetle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and click the thumbs up or like or subscribe, all that good stuff. Those are good buttons to click. They make me feel better about myself. Um, one other thing, uh, before I started this YouTube channel, actually I made a video called, titled Our Super 74, which is where the name of this series gets its name, uh, all about this car, family history, you know, the whole, whole shebang. And it's a really great video. It's probably the best video I've ever made. I, ple I, I implore you to click on it and watch it. I think you'll love it. Um, if you made it this far in this video, I guarantee it that you'll love this video, that video too. So please watch that and um, yeah. That's it, I'm gonna drive home. Home's over there, I'm going that way. <laughs>